Assalamu alaikum. In today's lecture, we are going to talk about the animals. Animals are the most important part of the ecosystems of the biospheres. Animals are placed in a specific kingdom in the five kingdom system called the animal kingdom. In this group of an organisms, we categorize uh, some specific group of uh, living organisms which are eukaryotic, which are multicellular, from very simplest sponges to very complex mammals, as complex as the human beings, ourselves. Animals, they are highly adapted to their environments because they are the heterotrophs, that is, they have to obtain food from the environment they have to depend upon the uh, producers uh, and sometimes um, other, uh, other organisms, the other animals, that is the consumers for their food source, they have to adapt to specific types of environments for uh, acquiring that energy and for reproducing their, um, uh, themselves to continue their race. Animals are widely distributed. In almost all types of habitats. Animals are present in aquatic habitats, in ponds, in lakes, in oceans, in seas. They are present in all types of terrestrial habitats like the forests, almost all kinds of forests, in the freezing cold, in the very very hot deserts. Animals are widely distributed. Even they are present in the air. We know the birds. Birds are the animals which uh, live for some time on the trees, which live for some time um, in the air, that is most of the time they are flying inside the air and finding their food or maybe finding their prey if they are carnivore animals. Animals are the very important parts of the food chains and food webs. We know that animals, they are heterotrophs and they are consumers. They have to consume different types of uh, producers, maybe sometimes plants, maybe sometimes algae, sometimes maybe some other animals. So animals are of various kinds. There is a huge diversity of animals present on the planet Earth. They are eukaryotic, that is, their cells have a true nucleus. Animal consists of the eukaryotic cells. They are heterotrophic, they rely on the organic carbon source. The carbon which is provided by the producers in the ecosystem or maybe by other consumers which are the herbivores or the primary uh, consumers. Uh, so animals are present at every level of, every trophic level of the consumers. Animals, they may be independently living or they may live as parasites in or on the bodies of other organisms. We know that the deers, the lions, the rats, the moles, they live as an independent organism. They may make the groups and families. There are many animals uh, like uh, roundworms, which uh, we call the pet of the The roundworms, uh, they are also animals and they live inside the intestine of human being and some other animals. There are some other types of animals which lives on the bodies of other animals and we call them ectoparasites. For example, the ticks and mites which lives inside the uh, hair um, that is on the skin of the uh, cattle. Um, the ticks, so ticks and mites, they are ectoparasites that they are living on the bodies of some organisms, other organisms, animals or maybe sometimes plants. So animals are very, very important for human beings and for the ecosystems for different types of ecosystems present on earth because they make very important part of food webs and the food chains. For example, if the herbivore animals are not present in an environment, then uh, the plants may grow to a very, very high extent and this um, uh, imbalance may harm the ecosystem. If the carnivores are not present, then herbivores may increase to that extent 
that they eat upon all the uh, grass and the plants of the ecosystem and ultimately they will also die so uh, they make a natural check and balance mechanism inside the environment now we talk about the diversity of animals animals are present in diversified habitats they are present almost everywhere they are widely distributed there are two major groups of animals called invertebrates and the vertebrates all the animals are categorized in either invertebrates or vertebrates invertebrates are the organisms who do not have a vertebral column actually we say in vertebrates do not have a vertebral column and the vertebrates the organisms the animals who do have a vertebral column and their uh, their actually nerve cord the nervous system is running in that vertebral column animals they are wild if they are living in their natural habitat they are wild we call them wild animals animals are domesticated that is if we keep them in our homes or we keep them in our um, farm houses they are domesticated for example we keep pets hum billiyan rakhte hain hamare bacche kuch bacche tota palte hain kuch dogs rakhte hain so they are pets um, some other people actually culture them for um, their personal or commercial purposes for getting eggs milk or some other products for example people keep um, the the hens and the cocks they are also kept for beauty beauty of the nature for example some people um, do have peacocks in their houses some people keep the um, animals uh, like uh, the beautiful animals like uh, uh, the pheasants in their house which are very beautiful birds animals could be kept into into a captivity or a controlled habitat for example we know that we actually grow animals in uh, the zoological gardens and in the safari parks zoological gardens which are commonly known as the zoos for example uh, we have a zoo in very good good big zoo in lahore called lahore zoo uh, there is a zoo in islamabad there is one in karachi uh, if we talk about pakistan and there are very big zoos in the world zoo is an environment where the animals are kept in in a specific environment which is not very uh, actually uh, near to their natural environment and uh, animals could also be kept in the environments which are more near which are more close to their natural environments we call them safari parks there are big environments and there are there are big areas huge areas in which we try to create an environment which is closer to the natural habitat of that animal we call them mostly safari parks or sometimes the national parks Pakistan do have many national parks one of uh, these is very important one the ayubian national park in uh, the khyber pakhtunkhwa uh, area uh, which have lot many uh, animals now we talk about invertebrates and the vertebrates we also talk about their significance how they are important for us invertebrates we talk about them first invertebrates are the organisms the animals who do not have um, a vertebral column there are lot many groups of invertebrate animals we talk about them one by one and we start from the simplest the first one uh, the first uh, group that is categorized uh, into animals the multicellular organisms are called the porifera say pori para the organisms which have pores in their body we commonly call them or also call them sponges the sponges are included in the phylum the larger group phylum is actually a larger group in classification um so sponges they are classified into the phylum porifera these are the organisms which have pores in their bodies which have porous bodies these organisms have uh usually they are attached from um, on a substrate maybe a rock maybe the surface of the so- of, uh, the bottom of a, uh, a sea and on the other side they have mouth mouth is the only opening in um, these animals through which water may enter or water may uh, go out 
um, they do not have any specialized organs. They are just multicellular organisms which consist of two layers of cells. The external layer called ectoderm, internal layer called endoderm. Though they do have some specialized cells, there are some special types of cells present uh, in their endoderm and sometimes their ectoderm which help them in uh, taking their food from the environment which is of course um, water how they actually take their nutrition water enters into their body through pores or sometimes through mouth and uh, they uh, their specific cells extract the food material um, the phytoplankton or the zooplankton from that water uh, by their ciliary, ciliary movements, that is movements like cilia, they have actually they are actually hair-like projections, um, and they uh, acquire that food from that water and then remove that water back. Uh, sponges, uh, they are um, important for human beings. We know that we uh, do lot many of our washings with the help of sponges. Sponges are used in the washing processes. They are actually, there are, these are the pieces of sponges, uh, sponge organisms. Sponges are also used widely in uh, soundproofing the environments. You know, whenever there is need of a soundproofing, sponges are, um, their bodies are made like this, that they absorb the sounds. So these are usually used for soundproofing of the buildings uh, and soundproofing of some other materials like the recording instruments. Then comes the next group called the cylindrata. Cylindrata, for example, jellyfishes. These are mainly marine organisms. That is, they live inside the seas and the oceans. They have some simple organs. They do have a mouth. They have specialized organs called tentacles, which help them in um, their movement. As you can see in a picture, there is a jellyfish which have its tentacles below. These help this uh, jellyfish in collecting its food from the environment and it also help it in the movement. These organisms have a specific property. They have stinging cells. Stinging. Jo dung marne wale cells. They can sting. Whenever they have, they um, go close to a prey. Then um, upon their tentacles, some specific cells are present which are called stinging cells. These cells produce a poison and also uh, they have a long filament which is usually present inside the cell. Whenever a prey come close, comes close to them, they release those cells, um, those filaments from their cells uh, inside out and uh, these filaments are in just um, act like injections for the body of the prey and they inject the poison in the body of the prey. The result is this, that uh, the prey uh, is uh, either killed or maybe um, deactivated, that is paralyzed, and then they can easily eat upon it. They do have a mouth and they do have tentacles. Cylindrates also have a specific property. They produce fluorescent light. They are usually present in the lower layers of ocean where almost um, no light penetrates. Uh, there are very uh, few, we can say, uh, molecules of uh, the light, the photons that they uh, do come. Um, in those parts, uh, these, these organisms, the jellyfishes and the others, they do live and they produce a fluorescent light. Sometimes they are called lights of the sea because if the scientists or some people uh, go inside that water in that area, and uh, they, uh, they look at these organisms, they, they shine, they flourish, they produce light. Um, so this is about the cylindrates. Now we talk about the next group, which is the worms. Worms are actually categorized into different phyla, but we'll talk about them uh, generally as worms. There are different types of worms which are present in the animal kingdom, mostly these worms are the parasites. That is, they live inside or outside the bodies of the other organisms. There are different types of worms. Sometimes, as you can see in the picture, they're flat. Their surface or their body is like a flat tape. We call them flat worms. Sometimes they are rounded and they are long with the both tapering ends. 
that is both ends are pointed um, we call them round worms sometimes they have um, a rounded body but not both ends are pointed so there are different types of worms you can see on a side and we commonly see this one called earthworm many times when there is a season of um, of rain you know there is raining uh, many brownish colored worms we can see uh, on the uh, surface of uh, like grasses uh, and the mud these are called the earthworms so there are different types of worms worms have uh, many times they have a regenerative power this is a specific property if their one part is cut down and lost they can again make their body part the same body part in the same way we call this property regeneration so many of the worms do have a regenerative power but of course not all of them the flat worms and round worms these are very important parasites of human beings these flat worms are present in the intestines of human beings uh, particularly in the children and um, they can uh, actually eat upon all the digested food from the intestine of the uh, child and child become very weak um, just like that round worms they also uh, live inside the uh, different parts of the digestive tract and they also feed upon the digested food material present in the intestine and the person become weak slowly though we can treat them with different types of medicines there are different types of medicines which releases these worms from the body of the uh, child or adult human being how do they survive in that specific environment of the digestive tract because it's sometimes acidic it is sometimes alkaline and uh, how do they attach there to the surfaces otherwise they will be flushed with the food these worms have some specific mouth parts with the help of those mouth parts they attach themselves to the walls of the intestine and when they are attached to the walls of the intestine they can survive there though these infections are treatable these infections are acquired from um, mostly soils uh, sometimes from water and sometimes from eating the infected um, animal meat which is poorly cooked so this is very important that if the meat is not properly cooked then uh, it may causes the transfer of infection from uh, the animal's meat to the human being there are uh, some other worms uh, called flukes the flat worms which are present inside the liver um, and these could also be transmitted um, if the meat is not that is the liver is not properly cooked we call it kaleji usually um, kaleji um, flukes infected ho sakti hai aur uh, usko check karne ke liye ek uh, uh, common tarika bataya jata hai ki agar aap kaleji ko pieces mein kaat le aur uske um, jo parts hain jo pieces hain उनको हाथ से प्रेस करें दबाएं तो अगर उसमें ये वॉर्म्स होंगे तो वो बाहर निकल आएंगे प्रेफरेंस ये है कि इस तरह की कलेजी को इस्तेमाल ना किया जाए इसलिए क्योंकि ये इस इन्फेक्शन को ट्रांसफर कर सकती है देन द नेक्स्ट ग्रुप व्हिच इज़ नॉट अ पैरासाइट दिस इज वॉम अर्थ वॉम बट दिस इज एक्सट्रीमली इम्पॉर्टेंट बिकॉज अर्थ वॉम्स दे लिव इन द मड यूजली under the trees the plants the earthworms are very important because they feed upon the dead organic matter and when they feed upon the dead organic matter they convert it into usable form for the plant so it increases the fertility of soil in which it is present because it makes uh, for example nitrogen phosphorus and other materials available for the plants so earthworm is a decomposer which eat upon the dead organic matters and it is beneficial for the soil because it increases the fertility of the soil uh it means that worms they are harmful and they are beneficial now the next phylum arthropods arthropods are very widely distributed we commonly know insects kide makode asharatul ars the insects they are one of the 
most widely distributed and diverse group on earth actually insects have much more species uh, than all other almost all other organisms and they are very widely distributed the phylum arthropoda have uh, four major groups which are important the arachnida which includes spiders and ticks and mites crustacea which includes uh, many of the zooplanktons the insects which are present almost everywhere whenever you look at a soil you look at water you look at air you find some some of the insects like mosquitoes like butterflies not many others then the millipedes and the centipedes millipedes and centipedes are uh, some specific groups which are long worms and they are segmented and uh, they have lot many legs arthropoda the phylum have some general characteristics they do have an exoskeleton that is the skeleton the skeletal support of their um, support system of these uh, organisms is present outside rather than inside we know we have an internal skeleton we have our bones inside the muscles and the skin they have their skeleton outside so we call them the organisms which have an exoskeleton outside skeleton they are segmented their body consists of segments that is it is divided into small parts if we look at a butterfly its body not its wings then you can find segments their body is arthropods body is generally divided into three regions first one is called the head region second is called the thorax uh, and the third one is called the abdomen head region includes of course the head and the neck part then the thorax which is uh, we can call it, it the almost the chest part and then comes the abdomen the softer part which have its soft organs now we talk about its four groups the arachnida the spiders ticks and mites these are the organisms which have actually four pairs of legs that is eight legs spiders have some very specific characteristics many spiders they are very poisonous they can kill a person um many spiders they are harmless we can they are uh, they, they cannot actually harm anyone we can see a lot many spiders in our houses which are making their uh, webs on different places they do not usually harm us um spiders they produces some specific um materials with which um you can see that they can make very fine threads these very fine threads or materials sometimes are used um in making certain products then the ticks and mites the ticks and mites um they are parasites they are actually the ectoparasites mostly of the cattle so they are important for us because um they can harm the cattle uh, which are the livestock of um, human beings we we culture them for our own purpose for getting meat milk um or eggs uh they live upon the body surface of the cattle and they feed upon their blood so ticks and mites um should be controlled in the livestock um the lice jue sir mai jue hoti hain baalon mein they are also uh, one of the arthropods and uh, we know that they have specific characteristics that they stick to the hair they releases some material that attaches and stick them to the uh, hairs of the uh, head or maybe some other body part and uh, when the sticky material is removed they are flushed away then the crustaceans crustaceans are very important because these are present in lakes and uh, fresh waters mostly and some marine waters they makes um, the very important part called zooplankton of the food chains or the food webs they are actually the link between the producers and the uh larger um animals the consumers of uh, water ecosystems then the insects insects are um, very widely distributed there are some very very useful insects like we know that honey bees they produces honey for um, for us and for uh, use of our children for us ourselves um, honey is a product of um, honey bee and there are different types of honey bees a small one a large one which makes different types of uh, honeys which have some their own characteristics which are good for health and which are also useful for certain medicines 
there are very harmful insects like uh, uh, those insects like dragonflies which can damage our crops. Uh, there are um, other damaging arthropods like termites which can damage our uh, buildings, damage our wood, wood um, based structures. So insects and uh, spiders, the crustaceans, arthropods, sometimes they are very beautiful, they are very um, like the butterflies which makes or which actually adds um, a lot to the beauty of the nature. Uh, sometimes they are very harmful for us, sometimes they are very useful for us. We know the silkworm which produces silk for us. There is a lac insect which produces a material called lac uh, which is used in, um, in, uh, in bindings and different types of other materials. Um, so Arthropoda is a very diverse group and is very widely distributed group on the planet Earth. Then comes the mollusks, the phylum mollusca. These are the organisms which have shells and a soft body. Their body is soft inside and they have a harder shell. It includes snails, lobsters. There are certain lobsters we know which makes pearls for us. There are different types of shells which we use uh, to make ornaments. This is also a very important group which is mostly marine. That is, it is present mostly in the oceans um, and uh, provides actually say uh, different types of products for us like the ornamental products um, and sometimes their soft bodies are also eaten, soft bodies are also eaten uh, by some people for um, some medicinal purposes. We also grow lobsters for making pearls for us. Then comes the last group of the invertebrate are called the echinoderms or the spiny skinned animals. Echinoderms, spiny skinned animals, echino means spiny Derm means dermis, dermis the skin. These are exclusively marine. These are the animals which are present only in the oceans and the seas. They have specific extensions of their skin which looks like spine. Uh, and these spines actually help them into capturing their prey or um, handling with the environment. Uh, these organisms uh, for their movement have a very specific type of system called the water vascular system. The water vascular system is a very specific system of tubes towards their ventral side of the body. They do have lot many tubes which have a fluid that is uh, its composition is just like that of the sea water um, and uh, these extensions are called tube feet. They actually when they attach to a specific surface they produces a vacuum and due to that vacuum they attach to that surface uh, and then by a thrush the whole organism, the animal, moves uh, towards uh, that substratum with which they are attached. Then they are retracted and they attach to the next part. This is how the animal moves. Echinoderms uh, are thought to be the link between invertebrates and the vertebrates um, because they have certain specific characteristics which uh, match them with the invertebrates and they have some other characteristics which match them with the vertebrates. So sometimes we, um, we call them a link between the invertebrates and the vertebrate animals. Examples are the starfishes, very common, you can see very beautiful starfishes present in our museum, uh, different types of musea if we observe them. Other ones are called like sea cucumbers, sea anemones which are very beautiful. Some are called feather stars which looks like in their appearance um, like a feather of a bird. Um, so uh, they also add uh, uh, to the beauty of the oceans. If we go down the ocean and towards its bottom, we can see lot many echinoderms adding to the uh, beauty of the ocean and makes the very important part of the food chains and food webs uh, of the seas and the oceans. So invertebrates, they are very important for us for human use. Sponges are widely used in soundproofing, in washing, worms are important because they are parasites of domestic animals and the human beings themselves. Insects are pests of many crops, so they are harmful, we have to handle with them. There are many useful insects like honeybee, lac insect, silkworm. There are different types of other invertebrates like lobsters which make pearls for us, culture them for uh, making pearls. They are components of the food webs, they are components of the particularly aquatic food webs. They are components of terrestrial food webs 
as the part of the food webs in the chains they actually maintains the stability of those ecosystems so this was about the invertebrates they are important for us from various respects now we talk about the vertebrates vertebrates the animals which have a vertebral column actually vertebrates have three major characteristics that is they do have a notochord actually notochord is a harder structure which makes the vertebral column they have a hollow dorsal nerve cord which runs in the vertebral column and uh, they do have pharyngeal slits sometimes called gill slits at any stage of their life we classify vertebrates into five major classes called fishes amphibians reptiles birds and the mammals we talk about them one by one their characteristics and their importance first of all we talk about the fishes fishes are the aquatic animals these are present in um, fresh waters these are present in marine waters these are present sometimes in ponds these are present in lakes these are present in rivers in streams in oceans seas even in the frozen seas these are present in almost all types of water bodies fishes are of uh, two major kinds they may be cartilaginous they have a softer skeleton and they may be bony they have a more hard bony skeleton fishes they have some specific characteristics we can call them adaptations they have a five chambered heart which is a single circuit heart because heart actually pumps blood towards the gills and then towards the body and then blood comes back to heart we call it a single circuit heart then they have gills for respiration for their respiratory gas exchange they because they are aquatic they have to live in the water they have specific organs called gills uh, gills are rich in capillaries and when the blood flows through these capillaries uh, to uh, uh, and through the gills which are um, flooded with water the gas exchange occur the fishes um, they produces usually large number of eggs um, and they do not provide uh, parental care to their young ones um, fish they have uh, though though some fish uh, do it but most of the fish they do not provide uh, a particular parental care but for uh, its compensation they produces a large number of eggs they are categorized among the animals called ectotherms that is who cannot maintain their body temperature uh, when there is a change in the environmental temperature if they maintain it they maintain it with the help of some behavioral uh, uh, mean that is uh, moving from the colder water to the warmer water or uh, vice versa um these animals uh, the fishes uh, they also have appendages which are called fins fins are the structures uh, which are extended from various body parts in different ways in different types of uh, fishes um and these uh, structures actually help them in swimming and directioning that is changing their direction or so and swimming in the water fish are cultured in ponds and uh, in uh, different uh, parts of the different types of like lakes and other bod water bodies for the purpose of making protein based food because fish protein is categorized in uh, one of the best protein uh, source available on earth so fishes are very useful for us because they can provide us with a good pro uh, source of protein in uh, the foods and uh, um as we know that uh, many of the people they make their fish farms and in which they grow some specific types of fishes uh, whose uh, meat makes a more good protein and they can grow maybe they can grow fast and there are different types of techniques which are utilized to uh, increase the production of the fishes second important thing is this that uh, the fishing industry um, also actually produce different types of products that is uh, we use the fish muscles actually as the protein source that is for as food but there are a lot many other parts of the fish um, uh, which we know their scales and their um, other body parts their fats they are there and these things are used to make different types of products which we call by products of the fishing industry so fishing industry is one of the uh, most important um, benefit of the fishes 
um, to the human beings. There are different types of fishes present on earth called like, um, you know, rohu is a very common fish, which is edible, which is uh, usually uh, we eat it. There are carps, which also grow very well. There are also large fishes, which are even carnivore. And sometimes they even eat upon, they can eat upon human beings, the sharks. There are some specific types of fishes called rays. Some of the rays are called electric rays because they can produce an electric current. And that electric current is enough to kill a human beings. Some fishes are very, very large. Some fishes are very, very small. We also uh, culture fishes for ornamental purposes. We know that uh, we usually keep aquaria in our drying rooms or in uh, uh, different types of uh, uh, public places, which actually adds the uh, beauty of that place, adds to the beauty of that place. So there are many beautiful species of fishes, small fishes usually, uh, that we culture for ornamental purposes. There are uh, some very human friendly fishes like dolphin. It's a very, very common fish. Uh, the human, children of the human and even adults like to play with the dolphins and they are very human friendly. So fishes are a very diverse group which have different types of characteristics and different types of benefits to the human beings. Now we talk about amphibians. Amphibians, they are called a transition between the aquatic and terrestrial life. Amphibians includes the frogs, the toads, salamanders and different organisms. These are also categorized in the ectothermic animals. That is, they do not produce usually endogenous heat, that is heat from inside of uh, their body by the metabolic reactions. They also warm up uh, themselves if, if needed uh, with the help of external factors. The amphibians, they have usually a four-chambered heart, which is not pro whose, whose two chambers called ventricles are not properly separated. They are mixed, so the blood which is oxygenated and the blood which is deoxygenated mixes up. But they do have a double circuit heart. That is, the heart receives blood from the body and it sends blood towards the lungs. The amphibians, they respire through lungs uh, in their adult life. Most of the uh, part of their... Um, uh, life is uh, in on, on terrestrial, that is on land. They have lungs for respiration. But for many times, they go to water. For example, for reproduction, they have to go to the water. They adapted certain mechanisms. They carry out cutaneous respiration. That is, their skin is actually richly supplied with blood vessels. And uh, a gas exchange could occur um, uh, with the, this, these, through these capillaries in skin and with the water. So we say that they carry out a cutaneous respiration, respiration through skin. Amphibians, they actually go to water to reproduce. They produce large number of eggs, sometimes even thousands of eggs. They lay eggs in the water and uh, these eggs, they are for after some time of development converted into larvae. Larvae are aquatic structures. They, or we can say aquatic form of these organisms, they always live in water. They are voracious feeders, they eat a lot. Um, and we know that a lot many of these larvae actually eat upon the uh, mosquito larvae which are present nearby. These larvae have gills for respiration because they live in water, they have gills, external gills. When they grow up and uh, they we call uh, by a process called metamorphosis, when they grow up and they are becoming the adults, they start losing their gills and they depend upon uh, the lungs for their further respiration. Frogs are very important because actually the amphibians, uh, they are very important because they also make a very important part of the food chain. They eat upon a lot many of insects. We know that larvae, uh, for example, we know that larvae of frogs, um, they grow in different types of water bodies. And we know that larvae of different insects, particularly mosquitoes, also grow in the same bodies, in water bodies like pounds, in the same season. And the larvae of the frogs, they eat upon the larvae of the mosquitoes. So actually they reduces the number of mosquitoes to be produced by those larvae. So they are helpful for human beings and other organisms. If there are frog larvae, they will eat upon the mosquito larvae, the number of mosquitoes will be reduced. If there are less frog larvae, they will, um, of course, will eat upon less mosquito larvae and mosquito population will increase. 
so they are very important part of the food chains and the webs uh, of different ecosystems now we talk about the next group called reptiles the reptiles these are also ectotherms previously called cold blooded animals reptiles are a diverse group of organisms which are actually adapted to tolerate the harsh environments mostly the dry and humid environments reptiles are though very common inhabitants of uh, almost all the ecosystems but particularly they thrive that is they grow very well in the deserts which are dry humid environments we know there are different types of lizards snakes chameleons turtles tortoises they grow well in um, various harsher environments particularly in the deserts they have a four chambered heart and uh, two chambers are totally divided and the other two chambers uh, the ventricles they are though divided but there is a small septum there is a small uh, part the lower part which remains and which is not actually separated by this the the, the division or the septum of the um, ventricles so some part of their blood mixes up with each other that is deoxygenated and oxygenated they also have a double circuit heart that is their heart actually receives blood from the body and send bloods towards the lungs to oxygenate it and from the body they receives actually the blood which is deoxygenated so they have a double circuit heart for respiration they use his lungs um because they are uh, more precisely land animals uh, they use his lungs for their respiration for the gas exchange they also uh, produces large number of uh, usually large number of young ones and um, not usually and normally they do not provide uh, a parental care to those organism to compensate those that is to continue their race they produces lot many um, young ones uh, there are lot many uh, reptiles very important for us like for example these lizards chameleons turtles tortoises they are very important parts of the food chains and food webs of different ecosystems snakes we know that um, snakes uh, could be very highly poisonous they can kill different types of uh, animals and even they can kill the human beings but there are certain snakes which are not poisonous and they uh, feed upon the insect pests uh, the pests different types of pests present in our crops like rats they eat upon the rats and they are not poisonous they eat upon the insects um, and this is how they help in uh say saving our crops from the pests but we cannot easily identify that whether a snake uh, is it, it is poisonous or not but we know that snake venom jo zehar hota hai saap ka that snake venom is actually used to make different types of medicines and particularly the treatment for the snake venom itself um so snake venom is also important for uh, an important thing for us because we use it in different types of uh, medicines and treatment for snake venom itself from us um some frogs um the amphibians are also poisonous um uh, some amphibians also have poisons and some um, uh, african frogs are that much poisonous that their poison can kill human beings and the uh, even a horse so uh, the amphibians and reptiles they are very important part of the ecosystems and sometimes they are harmful or they are harmless for us uh, but indirectly um, sometimes they are um, useful for us like um, snake venom is used for making medicines here you can see different types of reptiles a turtle you can see a lizard a very poisonous snake and you can see an alligator birds are uh, endothermic animals that is they make their body warm with the help of their metabolic heat production birds have a specific mode of life that is aerial mode of life for some part of their life they live in air that is they fly in air and then they go back to the maybe land or maybe upon the trees where they make their nests birds also have a four chambered heart their heart is comparatively larger and its four chambers are actually fully divided because to continue their flight action that is they have to fly and for flying they need lot much of energy and for flying they need lot much of oxygen so their heart is fully divided into four chambers um and its size is larger to um compensate the needs 
of the oxygen supply and nutrient supply of the uh, birds. Birds also have a specific characteristic because they have to fly and weight is very important. To reduce weight, they have very lightweight bones, which are hollow, we call them hollow bones. Their very lightweight bones actually help them to reduce weight um, for flight. They respire through a very specific system which includes lungs and associated structures called air sacs. Birds have uh, their lungs, uh, which could be of course expanded, which are expanded to a, to a greater extent also. They have specific structures associated with their lungs called air sacs. When they get air in, inhale air, um, it is filled into the air sacs as well. And these, those air sacs also help in its respiration. So its um, respiration system is highly efficient with the help of lungs and with the help of air sacs. We know we have uh, parrots, pigeons, peacocks, falcons, kingfishers. Birds could be herbivores. Birds could be carnivores. They are consumers and they are present of different levels of consumers. There are grain eater birds. We know the sparrows, they usually eat the grains. There are some birds which eat meat like a kingfisher, which eat upon the fishes. So they make a very important part of the food chain in the food webs. If, for example, there are certain birds which eat, eat upon the dragonflies, we know that if... Uh, uh, if those birds, they are not present in the environment, then those dragonflies may increase so much that they may eat our lot many crops. So, um, they are very important parts of the food chains and food webs of most of the ecosystems. Birds have another characteristic that they lay fewer eggs and they provide parental care to their young ones. We know that the birds usually make nests um, and in the nests they lay like, their eggs and then they take care of their eggs and when their young ones are born they feed them and uh, they grow them up for a specific uh, period of time uh, till they are self-dependent. Um, so uh, birds they are uh, very important uh, animals of the um, animal kingdom and of the very important part of the biosphere. Have a look on different types of birds they also add uh, to the beauty of the nature we have very beautiful birds like you can see peacock you can see different other types of birds here in this picture. Now the mammals, the group which is classified uh, on the top of the vertebrates, the highly complex organisms, mammals which have hair upon the, on their body and which feed their uh, young ones with milk. Mammals also have a four chambered heart which is also a double circuit heart and that is it um, receives blood from the body which is deoxygenated and it sends blood to the uh, lungs to oxygenate it. They have um, their respiratory system consists of uh, lungs. They respire through lungs um, and they are very very efficient lungs and the, the heart system, you can say the cardiorespiratory system. They have highly developed brains. In comparison to all the previous groups, they have a different property that their brain is highly developed. And this highly developed brain actually um, provides the social interaction between these organisms. That is, they are socially involved and they make uh, groups or a sort of families in which they provide each other uh, protection, support and uh, shelter and sometimes help each other in feeding as well. The animals, they have a thick skin in comparison to all other organisms and this thick skin actually help them to protect themselves, their bodies from the harsher environment. The mammals, they are also heterotrophs they are from herbivores to omnivores. There is a wide diversity of mammals present uh, on the planet Earth. There are a lot many mammals like the goats, um, like the buffaloes, like the cows, which are herbivores. And there are a lot many different mammals like lions, uh, uh, the wolves, which are carnivores. There are different types of mammals which are omnivores like bears, um, white bears, the black bears. So there is a wide diversity of mammals. These are very useful for us as human beings. So we culture them in our farmhouses. We culture the buffaloes, we culture the cows, we culture the uh, goats. We use them for uh, the purpose of getting uh, meat, which is a good source of proteins. And we use them for getting milk. And uh, we apply different types of breeding techniques to improve their uh, different characteristics.
so uh, and also there are different types of mammals which are very very important parts of the food chains like there are certain uh, arctic foxes there are arctic bears um, which lives in specific environment and which are very very important for the stability of those ecosystems so um, this was about the vertebrate animals uh, vertebrate animals from fishes to the mammals um, they have very very specific characteristics and they are highly adapted for their specific environments and in many ways they are uh, very useful for us in any many ways they are sometimes harmful for us uh, but uh, we but these are always whether they are harmful or whether they are useful they are important for us um, because uh, if they are harmful we have to handle with them we have to evolve strategies to uh, deal with them and if they are useful uh, we can use them for um, uh, getting different types of um, important products for us so today's lecture was uh, about different types of animals um, their distinguishing features their different characteristics their um, economic importance their um, benefit their, their their benefits and uh, their harms um, and about their importance for the biosphere i hope you understand what we talked about today we'll meet in the next lecture thank you